to Think Geek this week. My name is Bianca. I am your friendly neighborhood uh, social media manager, and this is Jeff. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Happy Friday from this very short week. I know this. God. This this week was exactly the right length for a week. All weeks should be this length, <laughs> and also all weeks should involve barbecue, um, perhaps some alcohol, and of course explosions. Yeah, it was. It's definitely. It's definitely the right way to spend a Tuesday. Blowing stuff up outside in the summer sun. And it didn't rain here, which was great. We had some really amazing fireworks celebrations. I hope you guys had a great time out there. I hope that you didn't set anything on fire, particularly <laughs> your hair. And uh, we hope that you guys had a great uh, day celebrating freedom. Yeah. <laughs> and if you weren't inside the U.S. We hope you had an equally fantastic week. It is just a shame that you missed out on fireworks for the 4th of July. Hey, maybe they blew things up on a Tuesday. Maybe that's just what they do. I don't know. Live it's, your it's, not a bad, it's not a bad tradition to adopt. It's not a bad tradition, just every Tuesday. Uh, we have quite an assortment of awesome products and some interesting news to go over this week. But we are also joined, I would be remiss not to mention the beautiful Spider-Man Timmy who is joining us today. He is here in honor of his new movie, of course, Spider-Man Spider-Timmy. Spider-Timmy, <laughs> the spider monkey. Mm -hmm. Get it? Because that's already a monkey <laughs> with puns. Uh, this amazing Spider-Man costume was made by one of our fans and sent in for Timmy's Costume Corps. And if you would like to make a costume for Timmy, you go to thinkgeek.com slash blog, and there you will find a blog post that details exactly how to get your own Timmy, take all of his measurements, make a costume, and send it in to us. We will take it with us to Comic-Con, which is coming up very soon. It is. Preview night is the 19th. Very cool. And uh, just so you guys know, a little secret, we're going to be launching and announcing some brand new, very cool products at Comic-Con, and you'll be able to get in on that news on the 19th of July, so make sure you've got your calendars marked because this is stuff you won't want to miss. Absolutely. And again, if you want to send a costume, we will feature it on all of our social channels. Just go to thinkgeek.com slash blog. It'll be right there. So uh, what, uh, what do we have with us today, Jeff? <laughs> well, we've got, we've got a lot of stuff. You know, we've got everything from birds to bowls. Birds to birds bowls. To bowls. That That's really the just... <laughs> One the letter. Full <laughs> I've, I've been, Anything I've, that starts with B. You know, I've been holding that one for weeks from birds to bowls. That's been my that's been my line. So So would you say that we're think beak? Oh, oh. That, was, that, was, <laughs> that was pretty that was pretty good. Uh, so what do we have? We have some Harry Potter plush birds. We have Hedwig. Uh, she is about a pound. She's 14 inches tall. Um, she is half the size of a real snowy barn owl, but probably only also like half as violent uh, in <laughs> like, real life, you know. You don't need any dead mice around you, to yeah, feed her. There so won't be any owl plus. pellets. And you get to sort of, uh, you get to sort of showcase your fandom. Hedwig's got some, uh, some posable feet, so you can kind of put her into whatever location you'd like. But she makes a great display, and she's really, really quite soft. Uh, so you can take Harry Potter's beloved owl home with you. Uh, and then also we have over here Fox, who is also very soft. Ooh, so yeah. uh, Fox is um, Dumbledore's phoenix, maybe uh, maybe a little more flammable, being a phoenix, but also great for display. <laughs> has um, has the posable legs as well. These are just uh, just now launched on our site this yes. week, and you can pick them up now. So if you are a Harry Potter fan, or you have a Harry Potter fan in your life who needs some plush birds, and like these are the ones. I don't know if you can see the detail, but if you look on our product page, you absolutely will. Fox's face is really amazing. Like these are not, these are not just like dolls that you keep up on your shelf. These are really lifelike and adorable and great yeah. reflectors. And, and the way that they're set up right now is their wings are tacked back, mm -hmm. um, so that they're more compact. But if you if you don't have a need for a compact phoenix or a compact owl, you can actually untack their wings and sort of yeah, that full size SUV kind of look. Yeah, if you've got <laughs> if you've got room to spread out, you can uh, you can spread your wings and not quite exactly fly, but simulate it. And sort of keeping in that Harry Potter theme, we would be remiss not to go over this absolutely gorgeous diadem. You may think, hey, is this a tiara? Or as Jeff likes to put it, a hat? This is not a hat. It's a lovely metal hat. This is a film replica of the diadem, 
uh, from the final Harry Potter movie. This is Ravenclaw's diadem, and that is made obvious by the beautiful inscription that's written right there. It says, wit beyond measure is man's greatest treasure, and all of our Harry Potter fans in the audience know that that is Ravenclaw's motto. And it is made out of silver-plated brass and some really nice, high-quality blue crystal. And I'm going to put it on. The reason that we're showing this this week on the stream is actually just because Bianca wanted to order a sample so that she could have one to wear all the time. It looks great with a blue dress. It does. It looks great with a t-shirt and gym shorts if you're if you're if you're working out. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much anytime you you need it, mm -hmm. it's there for you to make you look that much better. And you know what? It's so comfortable. Wear it to sleep. Wear it mm -hmm. at all times. Maybe not in the shower, but you know what? Probably swimming is okay. Probably swimming. Just maybe get like some <laughs> some bobby pins. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't just, know. You'll make it work because you want to wear it. And uh, it's very actually very comfortable. And I'm going to wear it. And it's gorgeous. And I feel both pretty and smart because thematically that's correct. Well, that's, that's what we're going for. It also, in case you do need to take it off, it comes with this amazing hinged box that's lined in satin, and it's perfect to display the diadem. It is available right now at thinkgeek.com, and it is an amazing collector's piece or integral piece to your wardrobe. I don't know. You have to do you. <laughs> and we've also got here, what else do we have? We have... We have some bowls, too, this week, don't we? We do. We do. We have some amazing Star Wars snack bowls, and they come in three varieties. Of course, we have Jabba the Hutt, unmistakable face right there. Chewy. Look at him. Look at that mouth. He look at his teeth. He, he I looks, just noticed them. They're very adorable. He's, uh, he's, he's very furry. He's very furry. He's good. And then my personal favorite, the Wampa. And the great thing about these snack bowls is that you just, you put your food, your cereal, your snack, your chips, just right there in their mouth. It's like they're coming up, taking a big old chomp <laughs> out of whatever your snack is. They're a little reminiscent of the shark, shark attack bowl. They are a little reminiscent of the shark attack bowl, so if that was your jam, then boy, if you're a Star Wars fan, we've just hit that nail on the head, that very Absolutely. small nail. Um, these are, they're very high quality ceramic, mm -hmm. and they are dishwasher and microwave safe. Look at that. So, so easy. Perfect for kids, especially in the morning. I have a set of these at my house. I use them to eat granola and milk in the mornings. It's really fun, and it just sets off, you know, the day correct. I just feel like I've woken up on the light side. Yeah. Um, they also happen to match our Star Wars Series 1 and Series 2 Geeky Tiki's mm -hmm. very well. And so, if you're planning, I don't know, a Star Wars party or any party that should be a Star Wars party. Which is, which is most parties. All parties, in fact, should be Star Wars <laughs> parties. And if you are hosting a party like a summer barbecue or get-together, man, we've just got you covered from tiki mugs to snack bowls. And uh, we even have some Star Wars serving plates, so you could just throw yourself a, a really Lightsaber chopsticks. Lightsaber chopsticks, some barbecue tongs. I mean, we've got... <laughs> We seriously have you covered. Death Star waffle makers. You could have a waffle and tiki luau. I think that I, all luau should include waffles from now on. That's the could, best idea I've it's, ever heard. It's waffles and cereals and tikis. And I think that's... Oh my. That's... I, I've invented something new. It might be a little mad science, but I think it's probably... I think it It's works. probably in my future this weekend, now that I've come up with it. I think it works. And then, uh... Jeff, Jeff, you're looking pretty fly today. Oh, this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this. This, just this whole thing. No, so we've we've uh, we've just launched these. These are Pac-Man Oppa suits. Mm -hmm. uh, they are pretty cool, full suits. So it does have a jacket. It has pants. It has a tie. Um, but it's pretty hot here in Virginia today, and so I am not wearing a button-down shirt with the tie. I am sporting the uh, the uh, Hollywood. Look, with the t-shirt and the jacket. Yes. Um, no, so we have these. They are great. They are pretty slim fitting. So make sure that you do check the uh, check the size charts so that you get the one that you uh, would like to have. This one's got Pac-Man and Ghost and features a really iconic level design. The inside's also got our Pac-Man logo uh, and, and this bright, fun purple. So, you know, if you, if you really want to show off your fan or just have some fun, these, these are great. Very geek chic. It is. 
Now we are moving on to our rotating segment, and this week we are going to ask somebody, who are you and why are you here? So just give us one second. for ThinkGeek. Um, I help manage our product selection, manage our inventory, and make sure that we bring in cool stuff when it needs to be here for you. Very, very cool. And how long have you worked here at ThinkGeek? A little over a year now. I um, started in March last year, so it's, uh, it's been a really good ride so far. Congratulations. And what are the top three things that really get you going, get you geeking out? Um, yes, yeah, so probably giant robot fights, space exploration, Obviously. and in general sprue kits. Um, anything that I can put together that comes out of on a tray of plastic. Oh, cool. Yeah. And have you built any kits recently that you've really enjoyed? Yeah, absolutely. I've been getting really into the uh, the real grade series of uh, Gundam kits put out by Bandai. Um, oh, cool. Got some really awesome kits as well as um, some really insane inner frame designs. Oh, yeah. So that just feeds right back into giant robot fights. <laughs> absolutely. Me uh, Megabots and uh, Sudabashi Industries, I believe, is uh, currently scheduled for an August fight. Um, it's going to be an awesome time. I'm really hyped. Um, Megabots has been putting out some great promotional video. Lately. Oh, cool. Well, everyone should definitely tune into that. I know I'm going to. Giant robot fights, what's not to like about that? It fits right in with explosions this week, in fact. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Eric, tell us about your favorite ThinkGeek product and why you love it so much. Yeah, so my favorite ThinkGeek product is definitely going to be the Tauntaun sleeping bag. Ah. It's an OG ThinkGeek product. We've got a lot of history with it, mm -hmm. um, and it's just one of those products that has layers to it. I mean, uh, there's a layer of uh, cotton, polyester, some filler in there, <laughs> as well as it's some great meta references to Star Wars episode, or, or, uh, episode 5, Empire Strikes Back, yep. the best Star Wars movie. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Wow, we're just dropping that Shots bomb. Shots fired. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Well, thank you, Eric, so much for coming in. Oh, that's it. You're cutting him out. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, what is, what is your Twitter, Twitter handle so that the audience can roast you? Yeah. <laughs> Don't answer that. Uh, I think geek underscore spam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so our robo account. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if you disagree with Eric and you want to tell us exactly what your favorite Star Wars film is, you can go ahead and tweet that at Think Geek. That's our Twitter handle. I'd love to read your uh, accounts and tell you maybe why you're wrong. <laughs> thank you very much. Aaron, thank Aaron. Eric, thank you so much for being here today, and uh, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely, it's great to be here. All right, give us just one second to switch back in. Surprise. I'm not. That's the magic of movies, guys. Uh, actually, we just green screened Eric just in. He wasn't even really here. <laughs> the truth is, he is a robot. Oh, he is a he is a giant robot. He just wow. collapsed in on himself and wheeled out. As you do. So <laughs> next week, next I know this is Think Geek this week, but this week on Think Geek this week, we're going to talk about next week at Think Geek, and next week at Think Geek, we'll talk about that too. But on July twelfth. There's a pretty important thing that's happening on the internet, uh, and it's a day of action for net neutrality. So if you're not familiar with what net neutrality is, basically it's the principle that the internet should be sort of left um, untampered with. Uh, it's, it's, the nation, it's the notion that internet service providers shouldn't be able to charge extra for fast lanes or throttle traffic, tell you what sites you can and can't go to. Um, this isn't exactly just a US-based issue. Uh, there's, there's a lot... Uh, there's a lot at stake, I think, for, for people all around the world, you know, especially if you order, if you're not in the U.S. and you order from sites like ThinkGeek. Um, if, if net neutrality isn't preserved, our costs of operating are going to go a lot up. And, and there's no way that we can continue to operate as we do if our costs of operations go up, right? So mm -hmm. cost of products would go up. It's, it's just, it's not a win-win for anybody, really. So mm -hmm. we are participating in a program that Fight for the Future is doing called Battle, Battle for the Net. Um, on July 12th, 
We're going to be doing some stuff on our site. We hope you will join us. If you're not familiar with net neutrality or you'd like to learn more about it, check out battleforthenet.com. There's plenty of information there. Uh, you know, there's, there's been some polls that have shown that 76% of the American public is in support of strong net neutrality regulation. So this, it's not, you know, it's not even really a political issue at this point. It's just, it's, it's an issue about, you know, the way that we want to deal with our technology. So uh, more to follow. Uh, we'll talk about whatever, what all comes out of it next week. But July 12th is the, is the day of action. And um, we hope you'll join us and hope you'll get involved. Very well. I have a short video. If you'd like to play that. Let's play a short video. Let's play a short video. video. Again, as Jeff mentioned, you'll hear more about net neutrality from ThinkGeek and I'm sure from many other websites and retailers. Uh, that'll be next week. What is the date again? It's July 12th. And, and like I said, this is it's a pretty massive thing. There's companies like Amazon, Etsy, Kickstarter, Vimeo, ThinkGeek, uh, the EFF, Fight for the Future. I, I, the list is huge and it's, it's actually on battleforthenet.com. So if you want to see the full list of companies that are getting involved, that's that's your uh, that's your resource. And if you're an internet user, I mean, even if you're not political or you generally don't get involved in these sorts of causes, if you use the internet, this pertains to you. It's really interesting, and it's something that we think everybody should care about. So make sure to check that out. But sort of taking a 180 approach, we're going to talk about my review of Spider-Man: Homecoming, which I saw <laughs> last night. <laughs> Uh, as I mentioned before, we have Spider-Man Timmy here. Uh, he obviously starred in it, and he was great, except uh, we're going to talk about, what was it, uh, Tom Holland? I don't know, he played some, like, bit part. <laughs> Just kidding, he was Spider-Man. Timmy, sorry. Uh, Tom Holland played Spider-Man. I really, really enjoyed it. This Spider-Man felt like it was getting back to sort of the comics and, and being a little bit more true to the original Spider-Man story. I felt like I was watching a teenage Spider-Man who was dealing with problems that a teenager would deal mm -hmm. with. Uh, whereas some of the Marvel movies recently, while very enjoyable, I mean, we're talking space aliens, we're talking about fighting gods, and this was like a much smaller story in scope, but still really interesting to watch. Uh, so I very, very much enjoyed it, plus there was a, a little cameo bit part from Donald Glover, who I still would love to play Spider-Man. I know he's too old, but that's still where my heart is. Um, maybe it, in the next reboot, Spider-Man will be a little older. Maybe. Looking, looking to the future of Spider-Man. Maybe, but there were some nods in there to the comics and, and some like you know, in-universe jokes that I found really funny. Uh, I think that the villain was very engaging. Uh, the vo villain in this Spider-Man was Vulture, and he was played by, uh, his name escapes me now, but the actor did an amazing job. And, uh, you know, you really felt a connection with the villain. It wasn't just like this big bad guy that sometimes Marvel, Just a punching bag? Just a punching yeah. bag, and each, each bad guy is bigger than the next bad guy. Aliens weren't enough. Next, who knows? The whole government's bad. I don't know. This felt like a very relatable villain whose motivations you understood. Uh, so Michael Kevin, Keaton. Michael <laughs> Keaton. I kept thinking Kevin Klein, and I was like, no, that's not the right one. Uh, Michael Keaton did a great job, and I would highly recommend it. If anyone needs a good superhero movie to sort of cap off their July 4th uh, week, this would be an amazing watch, so get out there and see it. Two webs up. Two, two, two very, webs up. Two excellent sticky webs up. Great. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, more on some consumable media for you this weekend. Castlevania, the anime series, launched on Netflix today. So basically your whole weekend is going to be taken up by going to the movies and binging on Netflix. Uh, so I'm going to be watching the Castlevania series. And, of and course, having a party having a Star Wars party to binge all of that Castlevania. <laughs> Thematically, it's Perfect. very appropriate. Um, 
Castlevania launched today. I'm really excited about it. Jeff, I know you're super Absolutely. excited about it. And in fact, the producer of the Castlevania series that just came out today has already announced what he's doing next, and that is an Assassin's Creed anime with a whole new story. So we're really excited to see where that goes. Uh, he has not announced when it's coming out, but we know it's coming, and we will be watching when it comes out. We are for sure excited about that. We are for sure excited about I, that. I'm pretty excited about Castlevania, too. Castlevania is one of my favorite game franchises over the years, and I remember I remember being a kid playing the originals on the NES and just being, like, maddeningly frustrated by how hard they are and uh, great sort of, like, feelings of accomplishment as you, mm -hmm. get, as you get through something. But, you know, that was, that was part of the time when... Um, when games were made hard by the actual difficulty level of the game, but also by the technology just doing weird stuff to you. So, like, you'll, you'll be, like, a couple of pixels from the edge of the block, and then Simon goes, oh, just kidding, into the water, I'm dead again, sorry. Uh, that, was, that was the story of uh, Simon's quest for me. <laughs> For sure. Falling into the water, edge of the thing. But I've, you know, since... It sounds like maybe we were just bad at that game. That's fine. Look, through perseverance, I did get through, but it was... Uh, we're it was, so proud of it you. Was, it was, <laughs> it was, so, it was so a so tough proud. quest, for sure. And then, of course, in between watching Castlevania and mm -hmm. going to the movies to see Spider-Man Homecoming, gotta get some gaming in there. And it wouldn't be Overwatch, would it? You don't like Overwatch. Uh, the <laughs> official Overwatch fan site, Thinking.com, <laughs> Bianca Ciotti, we are really excited to announce Doomfist, who is the next Overwatch hero that's being added to the roster. He is an offense hero, and boy does he look exciting. Blizzard has been sort of teasing the fact that Doomfist was coming back. They switched the Numbani map so that now the Doomfist actual relic is gone, and clearly it was stolen. It was smashed out of the payload. And the new owner of Doomfist, which is actually, Doomfist is the name of the weapon, and now also the character, so I guess you just take on that name once you take over the weapon. Uh, the new Doomfist... Doomfist Hero has been announced. He looks amazing. Unfortunately, he is not voiced by Terry Crews, which broke my heart a little bit, so it's a little bittersweet, but I'm still hoping that eventually he'll take part in some part of Overwatch. Maybe you'll just get to play as Terry Crews. Maybe Terry Crews will just become I mean, an Overwatch playable character. I mean, he does look like Terry Crews, for the record. <laughs> but uh, he looks really awesome, and there's a really amazing trailer uh, that was uh, sort of anime themed, which just makes me want an uh, Overwatch anime. And there's a really cool backstory about the trailer. It's that uh, the trailer was made by uh, Wolf Smoke Studio, which is a really, really tiny studio that actually got this gig by posting an Overwatch fan art on Tumblr that really exploded. And Blizzard took notice and was like, hey, people love this. Let's make it happen. And now it happened. There's an anime trailer. And I don't know about anybody else, but I want more. I've always loved how Blizzard does that. How they, you yeah. know, they, they try to include include fan creations and just sort of things that fans have participated in in games. And you see, I don't know, I, I always like the memorials in World of Warcraft, you know, where, yeah. like, from, from players who have passed away mm -hmm. or who are, you know, have family that has that has just sort of like become a, a part of the game when they when the player becomes a fixture mm -hmm. how they sort of memorialize in there it's really cool though i think blizzard does a great job sort of paying attention to the fans and interacting with them this is another neat way absolutely and doomfist the actual hero he is an offense hero and he looks really really mobile there is a lot of jumping there is a lot of crowd control i think he's really going to change up the meta a bit and i'm really excited to give him a try and see See how he plays. He is available right now on the Overwatch PTR, and he will be coming to the game very, very soon. So I'm really, really excited. <laughs> I've got a new Overwatch boyfriend. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from Overwatch. Oh, it's so tough to move on. And Bianca's new boyfriend, <laughs> who she'll surely woo with the, uh, the diadem. Of course. Um, NASA. NASA has announced a gigantic space plow. <laughs> That's just the headline. Just hashtag it, it coin it. Up space there. plow. Ha so NASA's created a space plow. It's an asteroid smashing spacecraft. Uh, you know, apparently we learned something from the movie Armageddon. Mm -hmm. And now we know that there's asteroids that could come in. And we don't want Bruce Willis to have to make the ultimate sacrifice. So NASA has gone out with a 
spacecraft that is actually designed to intercept asteroids that could collide with Earth and smash them to bits, push them off course, and save humanity. It's a pretty cool device. It sounds like something that Iron Man himself might have gotten involved with. It's, you know, it's, it's, it sounds like it is straight out of uh, straight out of a Marvel movie, but it is um, it's the Double Asteroid Redirection Test or DART. I had to read that one. <laughs> um, it's built and managed by APL just down the road from us in Maryland mm -hmm. here, and they don't they didn't announce a time frame. I don't believe of mm -hmm. when this is going to be deployed, but hopefully it is before the next cataclysmic doomsday asteroid mm -hmm. connects with Earth. Mm -hmm. But the idea, you know, the idea here is really like something out of science fiction. You know, let's just send a flying robot up into space and push the bad stuff away. It's pretty cool. I'm into it. And what's really awesome is they already have a test designed for this particular spacecraft. They already have an asteroid picked out, and it is called Didymus. And they are going to build this amazing space plow, and they're going to send it into space, and they're going to ram it into a giant space rock on purpose. Hopefully this one... That's science. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Hypothesis and test. So the hypothesis here is, I guess, hopefully that the, uh, that the asteroid that they smash into won't be pushed into a collision course with Earth. That would be unfortunate. So NASA, no pressure. We just want to make sure that whatever you're doing up there in space with your giant smash steroid machine doesn't push an asteroid at us here in Earth because we kind of like it here. For Let's not. Smash steroid. <laughs> For the record, NASA has already said that this is a non-threatening and small asteroid that they're just doing a test on, so very, very unlikely that it will smash down into Earth. But, you know what, Jeff, it seems like you just... Hey, question for everybody at home. An asteroid, right? How small of an asteroid would it have to be before you'd let it fly from space and hit you? What's the size of that asteroid before it's non-threatening? Is it the size of a baseball? Are you into like a 3,000 mile an hour asteroid from space hitting you? I think that there's no asteroid that collides with the Earth that is non-threatening. Like most of them burn up in our atmosphere and I trust that the many, many very smart scientists at NASA have probably done all of these tests. But I see where you're Or they're doing from. one now. Maybe this is, this the, is test. the test. What if this is the test? So just do it live. You know what, NASA? Get back to us about this. Jeff clearly has a lot of questions. <laughs> Everyone tweet at NASA. Yeah, I, at I've got to know. What's up with the space plow? <laughs> no, so I think uh, I think this is this is um, it's a pretty neat scientific achievement. It really does. It's got this kind of eerie parallel to mm -hmm. to asteroids, the game, you know, from yeah. for the Atari, where you're flying a ship around, smashing asteroids. If only so, you were wearing that suit. Ah, uh, that's the next release. Maybe I don't know, um, <laughs> but it is it is pretty neat how life imitates art there. So hopefully NASA doesn't. Number one, doesn't smash an asteroid into Earth. Number, Number two, one. does produce a viable prototype that allows us to deflect supergiant terrible asteroids from Earth when those come closer towards us. And that's pretty much all we have for you from Think Geek this week. And we will be back next Friday, uh, same time, same channel, same bad time, same bad channel, mm -hmm. here uh, at Think Geek this week. Thank you so much for joining us. If we're still here next week and an asteroid hasn't destroyed Earth, as apparently Jeff thinks it will. You never know. <laughs> We'll be back to talk to you next and week. And don't forget, Monday, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Can't forget it. That's 29 minutes ago from this time, mm -hmm. only on Monday. Very, uh, very easy to remember. That. I know. That was, that, was, that was probably some bad timing. <laughs> anyway, we'll have an announcement Monday morning of a fun new product. Mm -hmm. We have a great live stream. We think you'll enjoy it. You'll get to see us showing how much we do or don't know about a variety of things. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no. I need to study this weekend. <laughs> That'll be Monday. And like I said, if, and check and see if you've got a store near you because we're going to have some in-store events on Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope you'll join us then. Thanks for tuning in. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. Say bye. Bye. bye.